Yes, yes, yes. Shalom, Chavarim. Shalom. This is Yadin. Sometimes the Israelite name Yadin Ben Kushi, Yadin Ben Kushi, Yadin Ben Chayel, a.k.a. also known as Ras Ayadonis Tafari, and affectionately among the Talmudim, you know, the Chavarim, Ras Tafari Rabbi. But here, 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 brothers and sisters, this is to share a word on a situation that has been going on for almost, I think, the past two or so um, Sabbaths, Shabuas, since the Simchat Torah. Simchat Torah. We had a beautiful podcast. You can check it out on the Rastafari Israelites. Going back to Simchat Torah, the joy of Yah Law, directions, instructions, Torah. And... Um, yeah, that's the time they said the Hamas, it was news announced that Hamas had made an attack against the what's called the state. And I refer to it like this because, you know, just in the reality, not whether we agree or disagree, because ones will overstand exactly where we stand as Rastafari Yehudim, as Rastafari Jews, a.k.a. Rastafari Israelites, you know, of the LOJ. L-O-J, the Lion of Judah Society of the Majesty. Now, first thing, I want to heal up a couple of ones and ones and ones. You know, I and I co-say host, Just Vibes and Ross Seymour. You know, heal them up also, Ross Obadiah, duly elected first international vice president, as well as Ross Elijah Tafari of RUN. Reform United Nations Now. Reform United Nations Now. Look up RUN, R-U-N-N. Reform United Nations Now. Now, 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 now. You know, also there was a very good um, publication amongst, you know, some of I and I, Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated Counterparts, the Hill of Merkaba, the B.C., as well, aka okay, Dona Sanford, like that post right there, was going to share a little bit on that right there, but still, you know, certain things, as we say, um, section 11, you know, within, you know, the constitution of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, and this year, duly elected national president here, but it's not on that platform that we're really speaking, but on this platform here, but just to heal up certain ones and ones that we've had, reasonments and conversations concerning what Aguan, what is going on, Makora, <laughs> Makara, Makore, Makore, what is going on? And also would like to hear um Brother Zion Lex, aka Abdiel Ben Levi Levi. I think you might say Abdiel. Abdiel Ben Levi, or can we say it more Afro Shemitically? Abdiel Ben Levi. You know, a.k.a. also known as Zion Lex. Checking out something here. I have to give thanks to Isha Shali and I, Isha, and I, wife, you know, because she actually is um, sharing something in the next part of the home office here. And so I think it's actually a Sarnetta on his platform there, Jabari Osaze and uh, Zion Lex speaking about, you know, Kemet, Israel in particular, the Hamas, you know, Israel, the present Hamas, Israel situation that occurred on the Simchat Torah on the joy of the law. That was about two Shabbats ago, right? Two Shabbats ago. Now, the significance of that is very, very interesting, as well as the abominations, the Toeba, Toebot, Toevot. You know, that's going on in that land that many regard to be a holy land. Toebo to mean like abominations. Toeva, 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 Toevot. Abomination, abominations going on. You know, but there was an attack, it is said, right, by the Hamas. That's one of the two main um, Palestinian, you could say, some would say liberation organizations, but some would qualify them as terrorists. Now, I want to touch on this, the whole um, Fauda. I don't know if many ones have seen the Fauda. You know, we watch the series, you know, for a time right now. I just want to show a little bit of it here because when we started to get the info and also we want to heal up as well, the African Israelites of Jerusalem, that community as well, heal up to um, Queen Machida. You know, hail up, you know, to the elder, our elder, Malkia Tzarek, and the whole family, Mishpacha, right? Mishpacha, 
you know, you know, Kulam, you know, the whole family, Mishpacha Shalanu out there. But when I heard about what was going on, I thought about this last episode of Fauda. I think this is in series, uh, season four, if, if we're correct, season four. It's very interesting. You know, Ending Explained. Now, this is a video that goes into Ending Explained, Fauda. Fauda is an Arabic word, right? This is some scenes from the last season that we saw, right? Okay, let's go over here. Last season, we saw some of the outtakes, some of the actors. It's a very interesting series, like Fauda. Mm. Was it season three? Whatever was the last season, Right, I think I'm getting a little bit the season three, I think it's season four. Right, Fauda. Now that's written there, that's Arabic actually written in the Hebrew, the Asherit, the square later, you know, post Babylonian Hebrew, the Fauda. Right, and so this is now written in the Arabic Fauda. This is this one of the actors, the main actor. So, season, yeah, so season, um. Season must be season four. They must be using the still from the old one. Yeah. Mm. So season four. It's interesting in season four, and you know, it's on Netflix. One can check it out. I got like the subtitles. You know, if you can deal with the subtitles and everything, or you know, even for those, you know, checking out a little bit of the modern Hebrew, it's very interesting. But more interesting is the plot. They have the Mista Aravim, the Mista Aravim, the Mista Aravim, or like. Like Israel, Israeli IDF usually, you know, or in some special service, right, who are able to go undercover, right, able to go undercover. So Fauda in Arabic, it means, it means um, chaos, mm. chaos. So, so the series, it begins off with, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I think the background on him, I think he has some um, Eastern blood and some European blood. You have different admixtures, right? Now, there's the uh, Ashkenazi Jews, you know, we could say the Ashkash Jews or the Khazarelis, you know, the, who have that Eastern European background, Khazarelis. We find it necessary to, you know, coin certain words and terminologies because, you know, the one that's really getting hurt by this is the name of Yisrael, right? You know, even the Bible talk about the blasphemy of those who call themselves Yehudim, right? And are not. And we're not speaking of just so-called racially or according to ethnicity, but, you know, the connection of Yehudi, right? Being a Yehud, right? With Torah, right? And even the land with something given, right? According to the scripture by by the Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be the name. So this series here, I, I was thinking about it because they said this was like an intelligence failure. How could this intelligence failure happen? You know, how could this intelligence failure happen? And this is what happens in the last episode or last season, the last season of Found, I think season four. The same thing happened. At the end, it's almost like we don't know whether, you know, this special Mr. Aravin, the special forces that goes like undercover. So they're able to like go undercover as Arabs. That's how we picked up on it. And we found that to be very interesting. So when this whole thing happened and they said that, well, it caught the Israeli intelligence, Mossad and Shin Beit by surprise. It caught the so-called CIA by surprise, MI. M M15, M16, you know, also by surprise, you know, it starts to remind me of this series, Fauda, which means chaos, you know, Fauda, which means chaos. And it reminded me of some of the episodes and therefore, you know, this is Israeli made, you know, modern state of Israel made and everything. So therefore they're telling their own stories. It's not like somebody else is talking about them, but they're telling their own stories. And since it is in Hebrew, Hebrew and Arabic, a lot of like Hebrew and Arabic, and therefore, you know, for ones and ones, you know, subtitles would be probably necessary. Though you might find some, they have some episodes that are kind of like, you know, voiced over in English. You might find that out there. However, I would say to one, suffer through the, the, the subtitles. You know what I mean? And those who are learning, you'll, you'll pick up on some things. But if you suffer through the subtitles, you get more of more of the true, 
you know, um, content. Because I notice sometimes when they have the talk over, sometimes they they'll talk it differently, you know, than what it's really being said. So this is fauda. So fauda is really an Arabic word, fauda, right? Fauda, right? And they have fauda in the Hebrew. And now this is the special forces of um, the state of Israel, um, intelligence officers, operatives, you know, um, it's almost a, it's almost a little bit seemed like agent provocateurism, right? Check out how I said it, how I said it, agent provocateurism, right? That's going on, right? And they they have their own story within it, you know. But the 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 whole thing about this right here, and it's interesting to see the different kind of responses from different communities to this particular thing, right? And I haven't talked or discussed it much because. You know, um, we really haven't really talked about this so much, except with a few of the Chabarim, you know, a few of I and I associates and, you know, fellow um, Talmudim. So we haven't really gone into that, you know, but it says more than a television event, Fauda is also a political event. Now, it's interesting that the politics that are highlighted within this series, there's, there's you, know, you know, when you get that so-called, um, they say feeling, but you really get that perception even higher than the feeling you perceive something like wait this seems to be like that right much more than a successful action drama it's authentic honest and painful mm. and so we were advised by some of our fellows you know like you know like like to take it easy on this content here now it took a couple of sabbaths about this bit the second or so sabbath here Right, going on the second Sabbath, where we're beginning to kind of articulate, you know, about the most recent event. And I'll call this video, I'm gonna call this video, We Cry for Afro, we cry for Afro Palestinians and Afro Israelis. We had shared a meme about a Shavua, mm, a Shavua ago, about a week, seven days or so ago on the WhatsApp link, social media. For ones and ones that want to link forward, feel free to um, email Rastafari Jews. Rastafari, regular spelling, full spelling, Rastafari, one word Jews, J-E-W-S at Gmail. You know, could we like to follow up and on our platform on Rastafari Israelites where we share some of the live stream, the Torah, going through the Torah, but we want to open up so we can begin to have, you know, real time reasonings, you know, and just vibes amongst I and I, you know, so that's coming forward. Hopefully y'all willing, enough is going on. And I really pray for y'all to guide, you know, the Chavarim, the fellows, you know, um, called Bait Yisrael, all of you know, the house of Israel. When I say the house of Israel, I am mainly speaking, you know, firstly about ethnic Israel. You know, we the so-called black Yehudi, you know, black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah. You know, also our Afro-Israelite community, those from west to east, right? And from north, you know, and central to south, you know, who are part of the, we could say, the covenant-keeping community, Torah-observant community particularly. But this is very interesting because the picture Fauda painted is relevant, exact, and thrilling, sparks the imagination and left much to think about. And now, more please. There's so much to think about in this and it, 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 it's kind of hard to not think that this does not affect, you know, much of the political, you know, drama that's going on even presently. You know, over there in the state of Israel, in the Levant, right, in the occupied lands. An almost perfect depiction of the insane entanglement. Mm. You hear those words? Insane entanglement of the Israeli or the Ureli, right? The Euros, Euros, or Euro, Eurosareli. You know, this is to say the Euro, this is largely led by the U.S., the state of Israel. And to think of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, right? The king of kings, anointed king upon the throne of David, as we the black Jews, you know, the commandment keepers, right? Congregation of the living God, Elohim, Hayim community, even so acknowledge, we still acknowledge that role, that connection, 
of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, right? Within our historical, we could say, development here, even coming up and out of that enslavement and slavery or the curses for disobedience, biblically, scripturally. But the, it, there is an insane entanglement that's going on. Nuance undetectable to, by foreign eyes. You see where it says, with nuances undetectable by foreign eyes? Mm. And, and I have to say this right here. I got to thank Brother Abdiel, you know, Ben Le Levy, you know, Brother Zion Lex for his presentation. He reminded me, I said, Chan, I had circulated that. I'm sure others probably maybe picked up on that. And I specifically said the Afro-Palestinians. And then in listening to some of his presentation, along with uh, Jabari um, Osaze, you know, it was very historical, thought out, and really he highlighted the Afro-Palestinian, right? The Afro-Palestinians. Most of us don't even understand or understand the connection of the Afro-Palestinians, right? And many of the Afro peoples, to say like the African peoples, continental African peoples, their connection on both sides, right, of this particular struggle. This is why we say we cry for the afro Right, the Afro Palestinians and the Afro Israelites. If the Afro Palestinians, the Afro Israelites were leading, like within even the negotiations and communications, right, and had, you know, the so called world and international community behind us, there would be peace, right, in the so called, since World War II, that is, Middle East. But the nuances that are undetectable by foreign eyes, this series really brings it out. If one is able to watch it and also enjoy it, but pick up on certain things, take note of certain things. The use of both Israel's official languages, speaking about both the Arabic, you know, Palestinian Arabic, as well as, you know, the modern Hebrew. Wonderful acting, smart writing, right? into a first-rate action thriller. And there is a lot of interesting action on both sides. You know what I mean? Um, there is a, a little bit of a balance, but there's some things that are not these nuances. It's, it's a little nuances. And generally speaking, the mass, you know, mass media madness is buying into the... Um, the the so-called black and so-called white view and is missing the gray matter. You know, they thought the gray matter is like the brain matter. They're missing that they've lost the, the gray matter. You know, we are excited to share with you this original, you know, scripted series, Fowder, because that's the first thing we thought about. We thought and said, is this a Fowder operation? You know, just asking questions here. It was it a Fowder operation with the Mistar Ravine? Mistar Ravine? If you know about the Mistar Ravine, you know, these are um, Israelis, right, um, who basically go undercover, you know, and Fauda, as it says down here, means chaos in Arabic, is an unprecedented inside look, and this truly is unprecedented. Anybody got the series on DVD? Hit up Rastafari Jews, you know? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Let, let us sit up, let, you know, let us come to a righteous exchange. We'd like to get this as a series and even look into it even more now that I've witnessed the past two weeks since the Simchat Torah and the alleged, you know, Hamas attack. You know, that's how it's been alleged, so forth and so on. But, you know, we like ones to talk and speak for themselves. It even says in Ha Torah that one should diligently search out a matter. That means I diligently investigate a case, right? But look into the lives of a counter-terrorist team, Mista Aravin, right? Combat IDF soldiers disguised as Arabs. Again, who are the Mista Aravin? They are combat IDF soldiers disguised as Arabs. Mm. And let's also pray for our, many of our people, like I said, on both sides of this, the Afro-Palestinians, Right? And the Afro Israelis, right? Who, in the conflict as it is, right? Even on both sides, but given more on the Eurocentric Jew side, there's a lot of racism and apartheid, you know, apartheidism, 
You know, they still, that's why we chose the name when we said Ben Kushi, right? Yadin Ben Kushi, right? Although more properly it'd be Ben Chayil, right? Of Chayil, like Chayil, like in them heart, Chayil of the power, the Almighty, son of the Almighty, yes, son of the power. But then we said Ben Kushi, right? Son of the Kushi, because they consider all so called melanated black African, right, peoples, African related peoples as Kushi. And Kushi is basically to say like my, like the Ethiopian or my Ethiopian, the Ethiopian, right? To also show how significant Ethiopia is within this paradigm, even as a word, as a name and what it represents in spite of the naysayers, you know, like the Garfields, Garfield Reeds and the rest of them, you know, but even give thanks to his uh, provocateurism. You know, as well, because that's sometimes that's what we need to have these discussions, right? You know, to have these presentations, even this vlog right here. Now, the lives of the operatives intertwine with those of the terrorists. So we're using this to begin some cursory and provisional statements concerning this to our community and to our viewers and listeners. And please like, share, share this and subscribe as well, because Anyone who knows about this series can't help but think how ironic, you know? So the same thing that goes on with movies, what they call it, predictive programming. Was this predictive programming? Are we victims? Fowda. This is Fowda. This Fowda all over again. <laughs> Are we victims of predictive programming? Right? The lives of these, these Mr. Ravine, right? They intertwine with those of the terrorists, as they're called. Everything becomes personal and a heavy toil is shared by all involved. Look, look what we're saying right here. A heavy toll is shared, right? Is shared by all, right? By all involved. Let's go right here. Let's, let's, um, what's, what's the modern word that they use for terrorists? Mechavel, Mechavel, Mechavelin, right? Mechavel. Right, aim time, aim time, aim time, right, or a terrorist, terrorist, terrorist. What's a terrorist? A terrorist is a, is a, you know, you know, biryon, biryon. It's like a thug, a hooligan, right? Alarm, alarm, like alarm, like a thug, an alarm, a terrorist, right? So we have the mechabalin, right? And then we have the mistarvin. You know, like the, the 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 saboteurs, like a terrorist in the sense of a saboteur, destroyer. There's a few words in the Ivrit that we can use to qualify, you know, and we like our, you know, Afro-Palestinian counterparts to also, you know, offer some suggestions and recommendations. Now, this this whole situation, we often hear about the Israelis and the Palestinians, but there's also the black people. Right, the Afro people, you know, the African people who also are involved within this. You know what I mean? And in this world of white Anglo Saxon Protestantism, you know, that's pointing to to Great Britannia and her number one, you could say I would say son, but the daughter of Babylon, speaking about the United States. Right? So even when we look at this through the, through Ha Torah or Talmud Torah, we can see the real significance of what's really going on here, you know, and how this also intertwines, right, with a lot of the politics that's going on in in the African continent or on the African continent. I've had some very interesting reasonings and discussions, and hopefully we'll be bringing that forward, hopefully to the live stream, y'all willing, on Rastafari Israelites. So seeking to really, we have to speak to these things now in some very important perspectives, you know, for our community, speaking about called Chosen and Faithful Rastafari, the Beta Israel community as well. So this right here is what brought to mind, you know, was brought to mind when we saw what was going on. Right? When we saw what was going on, this immediately brought to mind, like, wait, hold on for a moment. You see what this is going on? You see what happened in the last series? where it's like the, the whole squad of special forces. You know what I mean? We don't know whether they're living or dead. Men, men that got shot up, shot up badly, right? And it's only they walked into an ambush. 
It's almost like what just happened on the Simchat Torah. You know, this uh, terrorist act, uh, incident, an accident. Could it be the Mistarvin and the Mechavelin? You know, could it be some some overlay like that? You know what I mean? So, yeah, this was very, very interesting, this particular series, Fowder. That's why we wanted to share a little bit of Fowder, you know, with you all, you know, just at the outro. We was going to do a video just in and of itself, but since it's, it's taking us like a moment, right, you know, to get to, you know, formulate, you know, a, a coherent and intelligence-based response to what's going on. You know, I mean, so much a response, but a response, right? In Torah, you know, in Talmud Torah terms, that would be understandable, a response to what's going on and where we stand, where our community stand, but also to get into the whys of where our community should stand. You know what I mean? What is happening between Israel and Palestine in October? You know, and also how does it affect, you know, how does it affect us and, and our population? We have our people, the African Israelites of Jerusalem, also hail up brother Yaniv. You know, I want to hail up brother Yaniv as well. And also along with that, you know, Ross Lawrence, you know, our brother, fellow member, member brother, you know, Lawrence Davis as well, because there are many ones who are feeding information, you know, that's that's being shared out there in the multimedia. Even some things are not being widely shared, you know, and we're reviewing these things, you know, but understanding the context of it. I mean, we can begin with, you know, his imperial majesty, right? And the Maui and the relationship of his majesty with those who one might refer to as, you know, um, the state of Israel, Jews, Right? And what's the role of even Zionism, what's called Zionism, and how that also becomes like a blasphemy as well. Right? So many people are, you know, cursing Israel, a name that caused joy for those who were able to receive Yisrael or Israel, just simply Israel, you know, but how it's affecting, you know, many ones and one's faith, you know. So we're in a time of like a valley of Jehoshaphat situation, like in a valley of decision. What decisions are going to be made? You know, there's been a lot of threats, you know, made. You know what I mean? Who's who in this big picture? It's often kind of um, parochial and superficial to look at this as just being the Palestinians because we had black people. There's a video, a very good video, where it's before the state of Israel was set up in 1948, right, by the UN backing. Interesting that Imperial Ethiopia abstained, did not vote yay and did not vote nay, abstained from the vote. I've often questioned why was that? It could have voted against it, it could have voted for it, right? It's because of we, the black Jews, and the black Jews of Harlem, and the Yehudi, and the Israelites over here who were in that awakening, the awakening time, right? Of from the 20s and before, and even to the 30s, to that coronation of the King of Kings. And also looking at the politics, right, or the political situation generally, and looking at the politics. See, when we leave out the Afro Palestinians and the Afro Israelites, you're getting caught up in the politics. You know what I'm saying? Instead of this being so called two sides, we have to look at the, th the third side of this whole picture here, right, concerning invasion of Israel. I mean, what, what is really being said right here? You know, but that's getting into, you know, the history. But we need to go over the history, and especially for Aina as Rastafari. You know, whether one is a Rastafari Yehudim, a Rastafari Jew, or Israelite, or not. You know, according to one's choice. The choice factor is important here. Some basics we need to understand concerning his imperial majesty and what was his imperial majesty's stance. Let's go over here. Okay. We don't have that right here. We're going to have to take a, you know, take a pause for the cause right here. Because we want to see all sides of this very, very clearly, you know. Let's see all sides. Of this. Here we go. Yeah, so right here, 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 here we got it right here. Alliance and alienation. Let's see, not there. 
Alliance and Alienations. This particular book right here, let me zoom in. Right, Alliance and Alienation, Israel, and Ethiopia and Israel in the days of Hala Selassie. This is one cover of it. It's a very, very interesting work by Haggai Ehrlich. Haggai Ehrlich is somebody that I had become acquainted with back in the um, back in the 90s um, when I used to go through by the old OAU with Salim Salim, you know, and you don't try to get like, you know, intel, you know, try to pick up some intel right there, you know, like newspapers and English and Amharic, you know, we would go through there, what were the latest and whatever it was in English, you know, um, yeah, you know, and that that's back in the 90s, but I had come across a work by Haggai Ehrlich, right? I come across a work by Haggai Ehrlich, and um, he was talking about when his Imperial Majesty, Haile Selassie, when he broke um, relations with the State of Israel during the Yom Kippur War, right? How Haggai Ehrlich writes on behalf of, of, of the State of Israel. He says, um, and how his majesty thought that we would take it in a brotherly way. It was clear from that 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 was a basic uh, kind of an overt kind of a threat. This is this is the Haggai Ehrlich, you know, at that time. But as a kind of a commentator and a, and a writer, author, we do appreciate, you know, his, um, yeah, his works, you know, as giving us another perspective to something that we had known about. Right, but there's not that much. We have this book here too. Also, give thanks to to Marty, you know, on that for sending that particular book. That book is all in in um, Martin Hebrew. All right, let's go back right here. Yeah, Martin Hebrew. Let's go back right here. I want to show you just a little intro about the book. Okay, here we go right here. Here we go right here. Right here. Okay, Saudi. Arabia and Ethiopia, Islam, Christianity, and politics entwined. What is the significance of Islam's growing strength in Ethiopia? And what is the impetus for the Saudi, the Saudi financing of hundreds of new mosques and schools in the country, the establishment of welfare organizations, and the spread of the Arabic language? Now, this is a, a secondary book that goes along, right, for, for ones and ones study you know let's go through this this is this particular book saudi arabia right and ethiopia islam christianity and politics entwined apologies i wasn't able to get a a clearer a clearer picture you know but this is imperial majesty meeting with king Faud. now that's that's a whole interesting historical aspect when we start to understand the big picture you know the real um, so-called politics, you know, and also vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, the migration routes taken by Ethiopians and the hostilities, right, within, you know, the Saudi Arabia kingdom, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. It wasn't a kingdom before. That's a whole interesting, you know, history right there, you know. Now, Haggai Ehrlich, in this particular document right here, right, which is a very interesting document, I would advise once to get it, this one is also interesting, though it's all in Hebrew, right? And I think there's an English of it. This one by Haggai, Haggai, Ehrlich, Haila, Selassie, right? Arye, Yehuda, Melech HaMalakim, Melech HaMalakim, Malakim, right? Melech HaMalakim, the King of Kings, the line of Judah, the King of Kings. So very interesting book by Haggai Ehrlich now. His Imperial Majesty and Imperial Ethiopia, the Lion of the Tribe of Judah's position and involvement with the Black Jewish, you could say Black Yehudi and Israelite community, is very significant. You know, we will say that our peoples got caught up on a lot of other things and did not strengthen that Imperial Ethiopia connection as the elders did all in the time of Mordecai Herman, going to the time of Rabbi Wentworth Arthur Matthew, also Rabbi Arnold Josiah Ford. That's a very important, you know, connection, you know, with who we are and with the big picture. Because remember, when we say State of Israel, this is to contrast it 
right, with the kingdom of Israel, right? And in order to have a kingdom of Israel, you must have a king of Israel, one of the anointed and crowned titles, right? The anointed and crowned titles. When we say he's Messiah in the sense of Mashiach, Mashiach means anointed. And upon that throne of David, there's that whole history, tried and tradition that goes way back into ancient times. You know, that, that man, the, the son of man, is the sign and the seal, right? The son of man, the sign and the seal. So that connection in um, We the Black Jews of Harlem, that particular book. If anybody don't have that book, get that book, We the Black Jews of Harlem. There's some important books that are kind of hard to find, right? We'll seek to do our best, you know, as a printer and a publisher to make more, you know, make more um, available, right? Now, over here, over here, over here. So let's get to this right here. We just had to segue to that. It's important to segue to that because this is not, you know, a diligent, like a detail, more like a detail. We seem to be diligent, but it's not like um, in great detail. There's some things we want to touch on right here, you know, the stances of his majesty. So it's that book that we pointed to, Haggai Ehrlich's book, um, alliance and alienation that's important for us as Rastafari and the pro Ethiopia community, right? To really get a better read, a better understanding. You know, hopefully, I and a few others, I can think of two other brothers I know have read that book. Also, heal up to Ras Cern, I Cern, Ras I Cern, also to Honorable Priest Isaac, also, you know, and Coma Dread, you know, Ras Kwame. You know, Ras Sahel Salas, Safer Salasi, Safer, Ras Safer Salasi, yes, called on also one of the ancestors right there, Sahel Salasi. You know, so this is very interesting because this is a movement, the whole Israel movement. We can go into the flag. Did you know that that flag actually was first flown, right, and first displayed, you know, by our people, right? That's really our people flag. Let's see if we can show ones here. Hopefully we downloaded it. You know, I hope we downloaded it again. Cause we, yeah, there we go right there. Look at this. This goes back to what, what, what time? 1903, 1904. And what is this right here? This is a treaty, right? The Lion of Judah Treaty between the King of Ethiopia and the United States. His Majesty Dagmawi Menulik, Nagusa Negesa Ethiopia, right? to regulate trade and commerce. And this was done by our black people, right? The Ethiopian Hebrew people over here who traveled to Ethiopia. And the results of that formed the treaty between the United States, which was brokered by our own black ancestors, you know, back in the early 20th century, the early 1900s. And this was put out. You can see clearly there's a flag right there. That's a white flag with the two blue stripes. Now, people would say that's the state of Israel flag. That's only if they're ignorant of our story, of our history. So there's a whole need for us to go through the historical exhibits, right, and point out how this particular flag was a flag being used by our pro-Ethiopia communities. So here's the whole Beta Israel, right, the Beta Israel, the Lion of Judah, that covenant between Judah and Israel. And you can see in the two respective flags, you basically have the Ethiopian flag and what today may be called the state of Israel flag, because even that was hijacked. People told about how the land was stolen or taken, right? right? And we have our flag being taken. And, and those of us, you know, those of y'all who know, you know what we have put out, right? Those of us, we're familiar with it, but we need to, just do a reasoning, a lecture on this, a presentation on this. You know, let's put this on the screen so ones and ones can look at it, right? And this was by those who they were calling the Abyssinians. Though they were identifying with Ethiopia, they were called the Abyssinians in recruiting followers. If you go and look up black Jews, if you do any brief research, there's a lot of information that is... Uh, here and there, you might, hopefully you'll find it on black Jews, right? And the black Jews community, some alleging that the black Jews were crooks and some alleging that 
um, there was a parade, an Ethiopian parade, and some cop or police gets killed by one of our people. Well, we understand the revolutionary politics, right, of our communities, even over there in the state, both the Afro, right, Palestinian community, right, and also the Afro-Israelite community. And there's, and there's, um, we always speak about the blacks, the black Jews, black people who identify as Yehudi and Hebrews and Israelites and the European Jewish community, but we haven't highlighted, you know, our relationship, you know, with, we can say, with the Afro-Palestinian, the Palestinian, even, even the Arab community who are pro Haile Selassie, right? I want to heal up my Yemenese brothers. You know, I got to heal them up too. You know, Yemen and the Yemenese brothers, because it's a long time relationship. And here, all this that we're saying is basically biblical. You know, we talk about Ishmael, right? We talk about Jacob. We talk about, you know, uh, uh, Ishmael and, 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 and Isaac, you know, being brothers, right? And that relationship that would be between the two, and they both would be blessed, right? So when we're speaking about, some might say, the religion, Islam, just as we know that being a Yehudi has to do with being of an ethnicity and therefore like a, a, a culture, right? Yehudi, true Yehudi culture is a Afro-Shemitic culture. And we see African and we see African firstly coming to the root of things. But I want you to take a good look at this particular flag. Inside the flag, if you can see right here inside the flag, the interesting you'll see inside the flag is there's a Magen David, right? A Star David. And then you'll notice that inside the Star of David is some Asherit Hebrew. And it says, Zion. It says, Sade, Yod, right? Huawei, right? And Nun, right? Sade, Yod, Huawei, and Nun. Or we could say, T-S, like a T -S, right? And a Yod, the E, Zion, and Zion, and Zion, and Zion, and Zion. The Y, W, and N, and Zion, right? Zion. So even when we talk about the Zionist movement, this too has suffered by right, regrettable hijacking. This has also suffered because we clearly see our people, right? Black people, speaking about black people in the early turn of the century, ones who had traveled, took ship, because that's what it was about back in those days. They took ship. Right? And they journeyed all the way right, to East Africa. And they conferred with the King of Kings, right? Minulik II. There's a whole um, narrative that we have investigated and find there is a lot of credible evidence that Minulik, no doubt, did send a shipload of gold right, to buy back. You know, the kinsman redeemer, there's a whole Hebrew principle of the kinsman redeemer, right, to buy back. Like if one of my relatives gets sold into debt, slavery, or debt servitude, and they can, maybe for them to free themselves, they have to work a thousand years. So I know they'll never be free at that rate. So I go and negotiate with the ones who have them in this debt servitude, and I basically, you know, I basically, you know, say that I will pay whatever the debt is. So that means that actually that loved one would owe me, but if, you know, family, we'll, we'll work that out. The whole thing is that they're not no longer under somebody else's, you know, yoke in order to make off a debt that they would not be able to even with hard work in a thousand years or a hundred years even. Now, there's some very interesting narratives that we have to touch on so we can begin to bring, you know, the picture, the, the 1080, the HD picture right, of Ethiopian Hebrew history together properly, both in the ancient past time, based on the best of the archive record and testimony, and also in modern times. There's a whole modern aspect of it. There's another book, too, We the Black Jews, by um, Dr. Ben Yohanan. That's a very important book to get as well, right? You know, so we have many of our own people over there, right? And they have various connections with the land. This is what I want to say. Now, when we talk about the Afro-Palestinians, there's various connections. Some are migrants, 
that have migrated there, you know, for working reasons. But you know what? That region of the world was a, a, a very significant port and commerce region, right, going back, right, for thousands of years, right? Even before we get into the time when Judah, before ethnic Yehuda, you see, ethnic Yehuda, anybody who truly knows and is not biased by other consideration knows that those who make the claim, those as Afro, you can say as Afro um, Israelis or Afro, when I say Israeli, Israeli is just a way in Hebrew to say Israelite, by Afro Israelis, we have long standing ties to that land. Like the, like the Ethiopian Jews, we want to highlight them as well because they've been speaking up. They've been speaking up and they've also been adapting and adopting a lot of the um, political revolutionary techniques like even the, the um, what they call it, the Black Lives Matter, right? You know, one will say all lives matter, but those who are at the brunt of persecution, they matter even more. Did you hear that those who are at the brunt of persecution even matter more, right? Those who are suffering and still having to like prove themselves, right? We know about that even over here. You know what I mean? This is why the King of Kings connection is so important. Even though we all may have different perspectives, it's like when we read the Bible about King David, we may have different perspectives there. Now, we need to also become familiar with this modern politicalism known as Zionism, right? And I, I just got to just remind ones, you know, like n not to throw the baby out with the bathwater. The baby, right? Let's go over here. The baby, okay, right? It's, okay, this, here we go. The baby is Zion, Zion, right? The name Zion. It's like the name Israel, right? Like the name Yehudi, the name Jew. It all gets gets kind of blasphemed, right? It gets insulted, you know? You know, because what we notice is that there's an anti-Afro-Semitic, right? People are anti-Afro-Semitic. Well, we want to coin the term anti-Afro-Semitic, right? You're against people because truly, they are african Semitic people, right? They are Afro-Semitic people, right? Whether that mixture is, as we say, ethnically, right, within their DNA, so to speak, right, or whether it's because they being Afro people, right, have chosen the faith, you know, the faith of our black father, Avino Abraham, Yitzhak Vayanko, you know what I mean? So the African diaspora in Palestine, we have to discuss the African diaspora in Palestine. What's so interesting is that before the European Jews had an eye, to the Levant and the Balfour Declaration and what the British, Great Britannia, mother and daughter, Britannia and America are very much implicated in causing this confusion. You know, many people don't know that the Zionist, Euro-Zionist movement, that they were thinking about, you know, they was actually thinking about parts of Uganda, Wakanda, Uganda to settle in, you know? So this is where our studies have to focus on so we can get a good you know, groundation, and this leads and is connected with politics and politics. And it's not the same thing. Politics is politics, is policies, and politics is politics. It's related to a lot of politics and politics in Europe, in America, in Africa, right? Even in Asia, th throughout the world. Mm hmm. And not leaving out Australia either, right? Because it's about indigenous people's rights, right? But there's an indigenous black Afro presence there, right? You know, that even if we just go back in history, precedes even our claims, right? As the Afro-Israelites, especially in the Americas and Caribbean, it precedes it just in a chronological historical view going back. But, but before even that, we know that we have primary claim, but we do not have, you know, the support. We have the support of the imperial government of the King of Kings. Mm -hmm. And this is where the book by, um, by, 
by uh, Dr. Ben, Johanan. Dr. Ben has a book, jo Jokanan, some say, but Johanan, right, but spelled for J. Um, it's called We the Black Jews, right? We the Black Jews, right? Let's go over here. Democracia, uh, uh, Democratia, right? Democracy. You're talking about democracy. So um, to get a better view, let's see, we, right, the Black Jews, Dr. Right, Dr. Ben, right? And we put out a, a scan copy for ones and ones to get a, a scan copy. Okay, here's here goes right here, Dr. Dr. Ben's book. Let's see if we got a back cover of it. It's right over here. So there's a PDF that's available as well. Ones can link I and I and we'll seek to get ones and ones, you know. And it's a lot of interesting books. This is the other book we was talking about, We the Black Jews. The Black Jews of Harlem. Right? These are all important books. As you can see, this is all a very important part of our history right here. Right, going back to the early turn of the century, the last century, the 20th century, as his mass says, with faith, courage, and a just cause. Right, um, David will still beat Goliath. So we're like the David in this situation, you know, the black Jews of Africa. Let's not dismiss, you know, the black Jews of Africa. This is where another connection of the Afro Palestinians, you know, and the Afro. You know, Israelites, you know what I mean, um, comes in. So there's a lot of interesting books. And because we're talking about this and y'all are talking about this, y'all are picking up on this and it's, it's getting caught up in the algorithms, <laughs> right? In the algorithms, even more discussion, you know? Um, when they say blacks and Jews, what about black Jews and white Jews? You know, because that, that's... That's, you know, that's basically, you know, where it comes in, you know, black Jews and, 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 you know, this book here, some of these we haven't read as of yet, but definitely we need to get like a book club together, you know, so certain books we can say, okay, we're going to highlight this book coming up, you know, and some books that y'all, some of y'all have read can be presentations on the platform, you know what I mean, you know, yeah, what's this secret relations, you know, a, a lot of this has its substance, right? It's a matter of just putting these things, right, you know, um, into context. You know, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know, because otherwise, it says the truth, the truth, Robeno, Yeshua HaMoshiach, he says that the truth shall set you free. You know what I mean? The truth shall set you free. So if we can have open, honest discussion, you know, um, yeah, right. And now let's go back over here. Okay, so we're gonna get we're gonna get out of this. This is just a kind of a provisional, a provisional treatment, you know, a provisional treatment of this particular subject matter, you know, to say that there's more to this particular subject matter than meets the eye, right? And we have our own people who are involved, right? And I say on both sides, you know, it's almost like you live in a place and there's different neighborhoods, uptown and downtown, you know, and you decide to live downtown, you know what I mean? Like many of our community, I'm like blacks and Hispanics, you know, where we even become as a people, you know what I mean? And this is, this is something that goes way back. We can go into the Bible and see how it came together like that. You know, um, but yeah, to deal with this particular subject matter, here's, here's the crowning of the King of Kings, King David, right? You know, the fulfillment of that word of prophecy as the lightning shine from the east to the west. We're in these times, you know, we're in these times right here. So um, let's go on right here. Okay, here's another picture. You see, this is from the 1920s, right? So if you know anything about the state of Israel, they, had, they only adopted that flag lately back in like 1948, right? Where it became the flag of the state of Israel because this flag already had power in a sense. Have you ever noticed, it seems like European Jews and black people, we come together in a lot of things. or so they come into a lot of things that we are into, the music, the jazz, even that great cantor, you know, Al Jolson, you know what I'm saying? And even there's a whole history of canting and chanting 
of the Hebrew liturgy for European Jews that is led by black chanters or cantors, right? You have to really ask yourself some deep questions here. You know, why is that? You know, like it says, by the rivers of Babylon, the acts of singers, one of those songs of what? Of Zion. So Zion connection with, even with the, the Israelites of Ethiopia, right? And the tribe of Judah is very important as well. And these are our early communities that were bridging that gap. This is one reason why you see here the American flag and that flag, because we showed you in the thing from 1903, 1903, 1904. By that treaty between the king of Ethiopia and the United States, that was brokered by our own black people, right? I say it was brokered because they went over there in quest of building bridges for us in the diaspora, right? And yes, even reading and understanding the Bible and recognizing the signs of the time they built those bridges, right? And what's sad and unfortunate, it's like many of us today have forgotten about those bridges. This sister here... Don't want to miss um, quote her name, but she's an Afro, you know, Afro Palestinian as well, right? So we have all different, you know, sort of groups out there, you know, all different agents and all different agent provocateurs, right? But what's very clear is this time of prophecy we're living in, you know. This is the time, you know, as it says about in the apocryphal book. You know, about Esau is the end of the world, right? And Jacob is of that, that new, you know what I mean? That new, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> just just sharing some. There's some videos that's interesting before the State of Israel. I mentioned that earlier. And you begin to see that it is African people. It's black people. Because even that region of the world, the Levant and, 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 and Arabia, right, was historically part of Africa. We didn't have these false artificial nation state borders, you know, but this was very important to the movement, right, that the Zionists, right, Theodore Herzl, right, and it's interesting how many of our things were co-opted. That's why we point out, you know, the, the flag, right, you know, that's a point in in itself, which is which is very, you know, um, provable, right? This is the thing; it's very provable. And then to see that our own people get like a second class, you know, status, you know, and all the people are referred to as Kushi, right? As Ethiopia, you know. When do we Jews notice that Israel is insane? No. When do we notice that the state, the state? See, the name, you know what they call it again? They say um, identity theft. Now, ones might find this, oh, how can you say that? Well, when ones want to deny our Hebrewness, right? Our Israeliteness, our Yehudiness, you know what I mean? And, and people like us based on what? The color of our skins, you know what I'm saying? You know, and we should all be aware, you know, that we live in this world, you know, of clear and overt, you know, racism. The Lord said to my Lord, Yahuwah said to Adonai, Adoni, sit, you know, the Yemeni should, you sit at my right hand until I make your enemies, you know, right, that footstool. And also to hail up to the... um was it the Haredi? I don't know if they call them the Haredi. Some of them are, but maybe some are not. We know these Orthodox the Jews, right? That you see how they even put their sign, support to Israel, quote, end quote, is not supporting Jews or Judaism. I mean, they're making a very good and a very relevant point, right? You know, a very good and a relevant point, right? And it's important for our community, Right to understand, and it's interesting that those who basically uh, kind of when we say hijacked it, but they hijacked it from within, because there's many Torah observant, even European Jews that recognize these basic facts, right? And on top of hijacking it, turned it into a kind of an apartheid state, and then want to make those of us who are seeking as desperately as it seemed as they were seeking, 
right, their own unique heritage, you know, and identification, making them an outlaw, right, for what they have historical and documented rights to, you know, and that's, they have a human right. Even the Human Rights Declaration point those things out. But Zionism, how the flag being co-opted, we show you, you know, the Ethiopian Hebrew, you know, the black Jew community here in the Americas, right, with that particular flag. Here's showing you some Afro, right, Palestinians. And even some of the indigenous Arab people, right, you know, are black peoples, right? You have many of them even on the continent of Africa, what's called today, like in Sudan and the Horn of Africa, right? When we look at their languages, how their languages are defined as Afro-Shemitic languages and they have a long-standing history and connection with the part of the world that's called Arabia. In fact, if you know anything about the, the politics, it's politics as recent as World War II. And it's in World War II that that particular region was kind of renamed, popularly renamed, right? Um, well, Palestine is one particular name, but, but uh, that goes back to, to the Romans. But in World War II, it was named um, the Middle East. The Middle East, right? And as the master said, it was the king of Ethiopia, the anointed king upon that throne of David, that was as the, um, you say, the, the, the mediator between the East and the West, between, you say, the Christian, right, more representing the West, right, in historical worldview, and the East representing Islam. And think of the, about the Judah, the Yehuda connection, and even how prophecy from the Abrahamic was called the Abrahamic faith. You know, <laughs> but what do they say to us? They say, enough. I will hear no more of this Hebrew nonsense. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Now, this is just to show a little bit of the, uh, we're going to end right around here in this, but check this out before you go, before we go. This editorial from October 8th, very important, this editorial from October 8th, Netanyahu or as they like to so-called affectionately, they, they have his nickname, but BB or something like that. Yeah, but he bears responsibility for this Israel-Gaza war. I mean, it's such a, a kind of um, a mind arc. It's such insanity in a sense, because he's under charges of corruption and been involved in changing the judiciary. This is one of the reasons why when the alleged Hamas attack came across the borders, you know what I'm saying? And there was not the, the, the troops. The troops were were placed elsewhere. There was a whole bunch of weird old stuff going on, you know? <laughs> it was interesting, but there was many soldiers who did not go, who basically were like kind of protesting, like by boycotting, you know, the calling. And then this whole thing happens, right? So they say he bears responsibility. The disaster that befell Israel on the holiday of Simchat Torah is the clear responsibility of one person, Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister who prided himself on his vast political experience and irreplacable, or placeable, irreplaceable wisdom in security matters, completely failed to identify the dangers he was consciously leading the state of Israel right into when establishing a government of annexation and dispossession. Now, we already know, or at least most of us do, and hopefully you're aware of the fights that the, that the Afro-Israelite community, right? The black, you could say, people, the Kushim, right? Are you not as the B'nai Kushim unto me or B'nai Yisrael, but what they've been afflicted by over there and the countless times, you know, various members of their communities are threatened with um, a so-called deportation, you know. But look, that's what they did to the Afro-Israelite community. But then look at what's happening to the Palestinian and the Afro-Palestinian community, right? When appointing Bezalel um, Shmotrich, Shmotrich, trick, right, and Itamar Ben-Gavir to key positions, 
while embracing a foreign policy that openly ignored the existence yet. But you can get more on it if you want to see, you know, um, more on it. Hamas, a small right, terrorist, Netanyahu, recklessness has brought war upon the state of Israel. Now, it's a state like the United States of America. Get it? Like the United States of America. This is what we should call it. Right in the modern politics, I know some say that's like acknowledging its existence, but it does exist. That's what we have to recognize. You can say, "Well, that's apartheid. I hate apartheid. I can't stand apartheid." So let's not talk about apartheid. And you, you're saying to keep those people in that situation, and we can get deal with that situation is to talk about it like it is. You know what an excellent program there. You know for conscious building. Hamas, a, quote, small terror organization exposed the nakedness of the state of Israel, a regional superpower. And why is that? Because it's a state. You know, it's a state. No need in denying the obvious, whether it's monsters, demons, or goblins, or whatnot. We just have to call it what it is, right? When, when the failure is first, while the failure is first and foremost that of the military intelligence, Hmm. Now think about our Fowler points, right? And the Mista Ravine, right? And the Mechabalim, you know what I'm saying? And all that, you know, Mista Ravine, those IDF soldiers, you know, who go undercover disguised as Arabs. There's a lot of, you know, they brought all this out in Fowler. We were not, not even known about it until that excellent series called Fowler. Mm hmm. So we're just repeating what we saw in Fowder and what ironically seems like what might have happened, allegedly, right, in this case, right, that of military intelligence and the Shin Bait, right, Shin it means like teeth, right, Shin Bait Security Service. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu will not be able to wash his hands of this travesty, right? Well, the Ariel Sharon, you know, They've done sometime the Ariel Sharon. Now, I heard that, that Jews are supposed to take care of its own, right? But if the problem really is with this Ariel Sharon, well, those who, you know, they, they have to take care of this. And it seemed like they were taking care of this to some extent. At least they were protesting it. And then all of a sudden, Trump is running for president again. <laughs> mm. Listen, sometimes things have to get worse before they get better you know those who are you know seeking a goal must keep that goal in mind now this is the next interesting thing some of y'all might not know might have heard a newscast or commentators briefly speak about it but they was about to sign this peace deal with saudi arabia now the whole backstory on saudi arabia for y'all who want to catch up right for the next time we come and just vibes a reason check out lawrence of arabia See, there's a documentary circulating out there on the internet. I'm just going to not big it up, but just point it out, right? It's called, like, Why Britain, you know, bears responsibility in this whole um, Palestinian and, and, and Israeli conflict, right? It's interesting how Britain, Great Britannia, the Tin Lady, you know, prophecy, if you understand prophecy, that harlot that rides on this beast system that has this influence in this beast system, even if it's through the daughter of Babylon. So you have baby London, London controlling the commerce, you know what I mean? And how money, the love of money. So the oil, the whole oil business, the petrol dollar, just throwing out some key words, Brenton Woods, you know, now we're on the petrol dollar. Right? And there's about to sign this kind of agreement, Netanyahu and the Saudis. And some say that Hamas, some say allegedly with some backing or coordination from Iran. Mene, mene. Uh, what's it? Tikul Ufarisen? Right? Mene, mene, Tikul Ufarisen? You know, like Fares, Feres. You know, that's the end of the matrix. Remember in Daniel's prophecy? And so that you've been counted, weighed, and found wanting, but and, and your kingdom is divided. Ferres, Ferres. How this <laughs> Iran represents Ferres, Ferresia, Ferresia, Parasia, Peres, right? 
Menemene Tikulu Farisin. All right. Let me show this right here because, um, you know, everything is moving at such a clip. Right. You know, and we took a, a little sabbatical within the sabbatical, you know, to kind of um, meditate on this, you know, and let the small, still voice and also, um, you know, check out, um, let's see, is it tech cool? I'm not too sure how they spell that. Boom. We got it right there. Mena. Daniel. Daniel 525 and 526. Two verses. And this is the writing that was written. Remember the writing on the wall? Mm. Is this um, writing on the wall, so to speak? You know what I mean? And this is the writing that was written. Mena, Mena, Tekel, Upharisin. Now I said that the word Upharisin come from feras, peras, and peras mean to break into two, to divide. Uh, peras was a coin too, a half mina, like a half shekel, right? A weight, a unit of measure, right? But the word itself in the Afro-Shemitic and the Hebrew means to split up, to divide. Upharisin, from paras, faras, to break, to break in two, to break up, to be divided, like the hoofs, like the hoofs of a horse. It's interesting because Ferres in Amharic is horse, Ferres. You know what I mean? So a primitive root to break in pieces, like the hoof, the, the hoof, right? That is usually without violence, to split, to distribute, to deal, to divide, to have hoofs, like a Ferres, right? So the Amharic Ferres and then Peres have hoofs. To break, to tear. Is this a sign of what they say, the horsemen of the apocalypse? But it was writing on the wall. And this is the interpretation, right? This is the Pesha. Now, in the, I think Pesha is more when we go with Aramaic, Pesha, or the Pesha, Pesha, here's the interpretation or the Targum, right, of the thing. Mene, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. You know, we speak about the end of the Babylon. Babylon system is fallen, it's fallen. It's fallen, but now it's going to become apparently fallen. You see, something can be done already. Somebody can be defeated, but you haven't seen them defeated. You know, there's a big difference. You know, somebody can be broke, but you haven't seen them broke. You know, they still dress nice and everything like that. But when you see them in rags and stuff, you'd be like, wow, they broke. You know, garbage, yo, they broke, broke. You know what I mean? And this is the Pesha of the thing. Mene, God hath numbered thy kingdom. Mena, what does mena mean? Mena, right? Mena, mana is a weight, a measurement, usually 50 shekels, but it could be 60 shekels too. Mena means to number from mena. The mena is to number, to reckon, to a point, right? And this is more Eastern Shemitic, not like Hebrew, like Western Shemitic. This is more Eastern Shemitic, to count, to a point, right? To ordain, right? And finished it, has numbered thy kingdom. Even the Babylon system has a number. Mm -hmm. Basically, effectively, it's an expiration date. You know, is now the time? Well, let's say it's the beginning of the time, right? The Elah, Elah, Allah, Elah, hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, what is Tekel? Tekel, Tekal, Tekal is a weight, right? Now, what's interesting about this, we don't have time here, but these different words, they all refer to the act of weighing. You know, like in, say, in business, weighing. You know, because a lot has to do with traffic. And I'm speaking about traffic with a K, right? To balance, right? To balance, right? The shakal. So you have the shakal, and shakal will be like Afro Shemitic, right? More East, Western Shemitic. And then when we have the word tekal, 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 it's like talata. They say talata instead of shalasha, shalosha, shalosha, shalasha. They say talata. That's more the east. It's like it's like dialects, you know, east coast, west coast for those in the United States, snakes, states. Yes, you know what I mean. So the states, the snakes, right? To balance, it basically means to balance, right? To weigh out. Right? And shakal, we have an Amharic sekel, like meskel, right? Right? That meskel, sekel, like a cross. The true cross is balance. 
right? That's the true cross, the finding of the true cross. So tekel here, thou art weighed in the balances and are found wanting. Wanty, wanty, wanty. You're found chasir. What's chasir? Chasir, something to be chasir, lo, lo echsar. Like, you know, Yahuwah roi, lo echsar. Yahuwah, Jehovah is my shepherd, I shall not want, lo echsar. Like, I shall not be chasir. Chasir, lacking, wanting, deficient. Like, needy, needy, wanty, wanty, deficient. Right? And that's from chasir. Chasir to, to be to lack, to be without, decrease, to have need. So when Yah says tekal or the tekal, right, thou art weighed in the balances. You are weighed on the mozen, the mozen, right? In the Mark we say mizan, 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 mozen. In the mozen is the scale, mozen is the balances. You are weighed in the mozen, right? The mozen, the scales, the balances. Weighed in the mosaic, azan, the root is azan, to weigh, to test, to prove, to consider. So somebody tell you something, you have to weigh it. You know what I mean? But you have to have some, I can't say, you got to have a foundation, you know, like ha Torah. You got to have foundation, chokma, wisma, right? Peres, now here's the peres, getting to peres, peres, right? So in explaining what was written on the wall, the mene mene tek el ufaresin, ufaresin, right? The peres related to faresin, peresin from peras, peras to break into two, to divide, right? Thy kingdom is divided. Thy kingdom is peras. Peres, thy kingdom is peras. So it was like a rhyme in it too. The oracle had a rhyme in it. Peres, thy kingdom, right? Thy malku, malku, this is the Aramaic, is paras, is divided, and given to the Medes. You know who the Mede? Madai? Madai is the middle land. That's Mesopotamia, what they call Mesopotamia, or like the Iraq. The Iraq. You know, Iraq is still a part of this. You know, Iraq. Right? The Medes. Media. The Medes. Iraq. And that's the region, they say right here, located northward of Persia or Iran south and southwest of the Caspian Sea, east of Armenia and Assyria, and north and northwest and west and northwest of the Great Salt Desert, Iram. Iram, Iran. <laughs> the Madai. Madai is the middle land. Madai, the middle land. So that's what they would call Mesopotamia today, or like Iraq. You know that Iraq, the Iraq, Iran. Basically, like they're saying like Iraq, Iran. Wonder why they went out there. They tried to um, circumvent. They tried to, what they call it again? When you act in a um, 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 precipitate and preemptive. They tried to preempt. That's what they tried to preempt. They can't preempt Yah's prophecy. You know what I mean? He'll let you go through a spin. You know, he'll spin the prophecy like his, the wheels of steel, like he's mixing it. You know, you know, like you, like a tune is playing and it, and it mixes, and you know this is like the last part of the tune. But a, a a careful and a wise DJ can make that go on for the next five minutes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Much much more or much less even y'all doing it with prophecy. That's why some things seem like, are we repeating this again? You know, was that the black cat? Is this the Matrix? Thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Given to who? The Medes and the Persian and Persia, Paras, right? Pure, splendid Paras, the empire of Persia, encompassed by the territory of India, right? India, remember the BRICS nation, India, on the east, on the east to Egypt, and Thraka, or Thrace, on the west, and included besides portions, look at this, besides portions of what? Europe and Africa. Remember in Esther? Esther took place in Persia or ancient Iran, right? And it said that there were Yehudi communities, right? From there all the way to Ethiopia, to Tobia, right? To the good land, to even Africa. That's what it says, Europe and Africa. The whole of Western Asia between the Black Sea and the Caucasus and Caspian and the um, Jakartas. Jakarta, Jakarta is on the north. Jakarta, you heard about Jakarta, right? The Arabian Desert, the Persian Gulf, 
and the Indian Ocean on the south. So that whole region potentially can, right? And in due time, it will light up that whole region. We're just showing you some of the, the basic um, invoices, right? And a few receipts, <laughs> you know, the invoices right here. So the Eastern country, including its inhabitants. Remember we talked about in Revelation, the army? People thought it would be China. You know what I mean? You know, they thought it would be China, but you can see where this great army, seeing that they're also religious, one might say entanglements, right? That's a part of it. You know what I mean? Where they come in as like reinforcement of foreign origin, Persia, right? So this is the prophecy right here. You know, this is why Iran... Right, it's so interesting and important in that situation. You know, now you have Saudi Arabia. There's some prophecies that speak about nukes being involved in destruction of places in Arabia, you know, even very, very important places. You know, so this whole area, this whole arena, right, can light up. Notice the parts that are still green. Notice the parts on the, on the African map where we get to the Horn of Africa, Ethiopia. Notice the parts that are dry. You remember Psalm, Psalm 68, the rebellious dwell in the dry land. Think about it, you know, think about it. You know, um, Netanyahu tells the UN that Israel on cuts to seal the deal with the Saudi crown beast. Mm. We don't say the end of the world is about to begin, but now look how things now have gone to this war thing, right? You know, peace with Saudis will form new Middle East. They already are trying to change the political dynamics of it. And there's something about it that we need to understand as Afro-Palestinians, as Afro-Israelites. You know, we need to understand about this and the big picture, <laughs> the prophetic picture. You know, he seems smug and confident for himself, right? Now, you know, this is, the, this is what they're seeking to do. Now, you see how Ethiopia, how they're surrounding Ethiopia, and this is a plan that's being led by the state of Israel. So here we bring it from the north back down south, right? You know, when things go south, right? When things go south. Now, this whole Hamas thing may have interrupted that, you know, to some significant degree. Because it could be that they were seeking understanding prophecy, you know, like Satan, how Satan understands some things. And was seeking like a, as a prosecutor. You know, the, the prosecutor to prosecute, you know, and this is a big picture because when we see Ethiopia in the south, right, and vis-a-vis -vis the Saudis, Ethiopia being murdered over there, being treated like slaves. And they use this term Kushi, that, remember what we're saying, that means Ethiopia, right? Now, it'll be interesting to look into Netanyahu's rabbi's politics, you know, and also look into the history you know, of the modern European Zionist movement, because there already was a true Zion movement before, and that's connected with the Israelites of Ethiopia. Are you not as the children of Ethiopia, the male children of Israel? So it's interesting who they would, you know, persecute, right? So, you know, that's what we cry, you know, for the Afro. You know, yeah, <laughs> you know, Shemite, responsibility for this. And maybe we'll leave it right here. This is on Haaretz. This is their main newspaper. So there's even many on the ground, right? You could say on the front lines and for our people who are on the front lines over there, as we mentioned, just generally speaking, some of the peoples, you know what I mean? The Ethiopian, Yehudin, you know, the... um. African Israelites, African Israelites of Jerusalem, that community, the Kingdom of Yah community, you know, and many, many, many ones, Mishpacha, Shalanu. But here it says Israel and the New World Disorder. All right, I want you to, I want you to, you know, take a stock of that right there. You know, Israel and the New World Disorder. It's from a 2023 conference. Right, a 2023 conference that was held earlier this year. Right, haven't seen the results of it, you know. But Israel and the New World, you know, and the New World disorder. I think it's very interesting for ones to check it out. 
you know, just the theme of that, you know, and this is what we got going on right here. You know, that's how Trump is running for president. You know, business wise, he's better for business. Right. But what does it profit a man to gain the world and to lose his own soul? The disaster that befell Israel in the holiday of Simchat Torah. Joy of the Almighty's direction instruction. The question we have to ask is, how has the state of Israel been following the Almighty's instruction? I mean, if you're going to be joyful in Torah, I mean, it didn't say the Simchat Talmud, it said the Simchat Torah, right? Then we have to weigh things, you know, as the previous, you know, or we said previously. So we're going to sum up here, my brothers and sisters. Israel is calling 911. Is this their 911? <laughs> is it? You know what I mean? Luda's government. Mim Shalet, right? Ha Visa. Mim Shalet Ha Visa. You know, a Luda's money for nothing, right? Getting money for nothing. So it seems like the same, you know, the same story, you know, all over again, you know? And it all began with. Well, in this time, you know, but the background on this is what's of even more, you know, interest. So we're going to seal this up, you know, where, well, not where we began exactly, but just go through this right here. Yeah, Haggai Ehrlich's book, get a copy. You know, those of you that can check the Hebrew, get a copy of this as well. You know, Haile Selassie. Arye Yehuda, Melech HaMelachim, you know, he warned the state of Israel, you know, they should have listened to his warning, it's like Omar in The Wire, you know, where he's whistling, he says, you know, if you come, hey bae, every bay, if you come at the king, you know, come against the king, come at the king, you best not miss, and he missed him, you know, come like a thief in the night. 